I'm the last presenter of this panel. Uh, obviously, I guess I have some disadvantage because so many issues have been covered by a previous uh, panelists. Now I'm going to try to turn this disadvantage into advantage. So I decided to do uh, as the following. I, based on what uh, panelists say, based on uh, my understanding, I, I try to summarize uh, four issues uh, currently international community are uh, much concerned. Uh, they raise some question uh, on this uh, important issue uh, we are facing. First uh, issue uh, regarding the recovery of uh, world economy. Uh, it's obviously uh, everybody recognizes now uh, world economy uh, under the recovery. The, the question uh, people raise is this recovery can be sustainable or not? Also, so-called secure stagnation claimed by Larry Summer still exist or not. Uh, furthermore, uh, we see the, the sign, uh, the monetary policy in advanced country has already uh, started to change. Uh, people summarize uh, maybe different uh, speed in same direction. That means the QE will gradually exit. These uh, exit, QE exit, what's the impact on the global liquidity, particularly on developing countries? That's kind of a question people raised on the first issue. Second issue is how to deal with the uh, possible negative part of globalization. Uh, even people support globalization recognize uh, some possible negative uh, outcome from uh, globalization. Particularly, uh, although globally the income uh, equality has been reduced, I mean, among the different countries, the, the equality will be reduced. But in each of countries, no matter advanced or developing countries, income equality the gap uh, wide, how to solve uh, the issue. Some people propose to take what they call UBI, universal base income. That means every citizen can get a minimum uh, income from uh, government. Of course, people argue whether these can be affordable to do that. So some people propose maybe take another measure, tax credit encourage people uh, hard working, but at the least give some minimum income. Uh, that's the second uh, issue. Third issue, what's the impact of new technology, uh, particularly uh, artificial uh, intelligence, uh, fintech. Uh, as a, the second panelist uh, described, maybe not necessarily obviously have some positive uh, impact or benefit from uh, in terms of uh, labor productivity or total uh, activity, uh, productivity. Furthermore, even people argue maybe AI itself will threaten the human being existence, whether it's exaggerated or not. Some people are very much concerned of these positive or negative impact of new technology. The last issue, I guess, how uh, to uh, prevent in the future against financial uh, crisis. Uh, people mentioned almost 10 years past uh, since the outbreak uh, uh, global financial crisis. Uh, people argue, uh, what's the next time for uh, Minsky time come? Uh, so some sign uh, people worry about. Uh, for example, people mention uh, is a uh, still we have a very high leverage uh, level. Also, in fluctuation of cross-border capital, yes, you can see uh, immediately before and after uh, global uh, financial crisis, the fluctuation of cross-border capital is very uh, dramatically 
later on, after the uh, outbreak of global uh, financial crisis, yes, the fluctuation a little bit come down. But among the developing countries, the fluctuation is still very high. So people still worry about that. The next uh, part of my presentation, I want to, because I'm Chinese, I want to talk about some uh, Chinese economy, although uh, some panel have already uh, touched upon. I guess uh, one or two years, uh, many people, uh, international uh, community, worry about uh, the possibility of a hard landing uh, for Chinese economy. But now nobody talk about that. Because uh, so far, uh, Chinese uh, economy perform uh, relatively well. Um, last year, uh, the GDP growth uh, was 6.9%. Uh, uh, in the first uh, third quarter this year, also GDP growth uh, reached same 6.9%. The IMF uh, raised the, their forecast four times uh, this year. Now they forecast maybe at the end of this year, GDP growth of China can reach 6.8%. Uh, but don't forget, the target uh, for Chinese government uh, uh, set at the beginning of this only 6.5%. So I don't see any problem for uh, uh, growth rate. Uh, that means the generally, uh, the Chinese economy uh, have already uh, stabilized. Even next year, I guess, uh, is the same situation. Obviously, uh, another issue people raise uh, many times uh, about debt, debt ratio in China. Even SP uh, downgrade uh, of Chinese uh, sovereign uh, uh, rating. Uh, generally speaking, the, the debt ratio in China uh, generally is, is okay, particularly uh, government debt and household debt uh, relative to other countries is, is low. The issue people worry about is the debt ratio of non-financial sector. Uh, probably now they reach your, uh, 160% of GDP, uh, which is uh, uh, very high. Uh, the issue, yes, uh, we should be take care of uh, that issue. Uh, at the same time, I don't think we should uh, exaggerate the, 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 the issue because in China, um, there's some difference um, uh, with other countries. First of all, um, the, the, these uh, business uh, or COP that are that high, one of the reasons is SOE, uh, state-owned enterprises, uh, has a very high uh, debt issue. But among them, actually, is the local government use these SOE as a flat, uh, as a platform to uh, raise uh, to get money. That you have, we have to understand that the local government in China they have a lot of resource, they have an asset, so they can cover uh, these debt. That's first uh, reason. Second reason is that some people calculate in terms of size of financing for these corporation, almost same with the United States, with the EU, because China, uh, we use more uh, indirect financing rather than direct financing. So they, it's hard for uh, Chinese corporation to get funding from stock market rather than uh, just borrow money from bank. So, um, the, the example, uh, it's a very interesting example, I guess last week, I guess or one week ago, uh, Chinese governments in many years uh, issued the US dollar uh, uh, sovereign bank uh, in Hong Kong uh, for two, uh, uh, two uh, billion US dollars. Actually, the, at the end, the, the yield is very low only a little bit higher than U.S. Treasury, I guess, by 0 0.125. That means the market still treats sovereign debt of China uh, is high. So I guess uh, that's the general uh, description on Chinese current uh, situation. Of course, tomorrow we have another workshop. I I'm going to talk about long term. What's the outcome of uh, 19th uh, uh, National Congress of Communist Party uh, from uh, 
economic interpretation, that's tomorrow. Uh, I stop here.